now we want to just take a couple of minutes and invite a, a couple of people. We have Ann Berry with us today, and um, she was one of our first people to come and, and get your, get herself a, a digital badge. And actually, she got seven, so she got her macro badge, which is very awesome that you were able to do that. And we just want to take a minute and, and talk to her. And then we also have Iris Jacobson here, um, who has used uh, the micro credentialings in one of her classes. So, Anne, if you could just take a minute and uh, uh, introduce yourself and, and tell us, you know, why you did this and what's uh, what are the benefits that you saw? Sure. Thank you for asking me to do this. I was so excited when I first learned out about the opportunity. I'm um, Ann Berry. I am um, the coordinator for the speech related services in AT. Uh, for Racine Unified School District. So it's a lot of different hats that I wear. And just in, I initially I received my trainings through the Wisconsin Assistive Technology Initiative and those trainings were wonderful. And I met Kathy actually um, at that time. So it's kind of been fun to reconnect it with this. But I did it because I was starting to get more involved with um, needing to be up to date on some of the services and strategies um, for the for our visual our students with visual impairments and hearing impairments, and just decided that it would be good to get updated on on what's new, what's fresh. It was just kind of a, a refreshing thing that I needed in at this stage in my career, and I thought they were really useful, really helpful. Um, very informative, thought-provoking, and I was able to bring back some things to our district and to different teams that I was servicing on, <clears throat> serving on to help our kids um, so that they could access their education and just, you know, help them with their communication skills and um, just overall found it to be a really beneficial thing to do. And I like the fact that I could do it at my own pace. And I always wanted to go back and get some kind of a certification for assistive technology. A lot of what I've done has been learning through um, webinars and professional learning and just kind of wanted to have something a little bit more official to say that I completed this and, um, and just all the different choices that you saw that of different areas that we can select to learn more about. Um, every one of them just seemed to, I, I just wanted to learn as much as I could about what's new and just be more proficient in this area. So does that answer it, Kathy? Anything else? I think so. Okay. Uh, anything that you found, like, was there one of those ATEM modules that you thought was just super wonderful and that, uh, you know, you maybe you want to, that you learn something very cool from, you want to share? Um, I think that the AAC one was really good. And, and also the implementation with the IEPs, that was very, very useful and very timely for me. Um, it, it helped when I serve on these IEP team meetings, just to kind of re, reinstate to people that, you know, I can provide consultative services. These services can be provided through speech therapy, through occupational therapy, through vision services, and just helping those, helping people in those different areas to learn more about the, the areas that they're in and see how they can help to support and, um, and enhance their services for those kids was very, very useful. That's wonderful. And did you find the, the process was pretty easy once you got through it? Once I got through it, yes. There were a couple of things that I needed help with. Um, but all in all, it once I got used to it, it was very user friendly and it all made sense. And um, it was it was very good. So the resources are phenomenal, too. I really, really like those. And I've um, printed some of them out. So I have a file with all of those ideas and all of that information that I can go back to. And as a matter of fact, just the other day, I went back to look at something just as a refresher. So it's a tremendous wealth of information. And I just think it's really neat that you're offering it 
and um, I'm very appreciative to have been able to take part in it. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you've done and for your students. You know, your students are very lucky to have you that you've gone through seven of these and you've got your macro credentials. So nice job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. And thank Anyone you. Anyone have any questions for Ann? Because she's been through it. <laughs> yep. Anybody? I'm, I'm happy to answer anything. While you're all thinking, we'll bring Iris on, Iris Jacobson. There you are. Hi, Iris. Hi. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourself and then tell them why you sure. why you're using the modules. <laughs> <laughs> so my Iris Jacobson and I uh, teach part time for the University of Wisconsin um, Oshkosh and a couple other um, venues um, helping teachers get licensed for special education. Right, because we're in a um, era and in a time of need and shortages. So. Um, I originally, I've been teaching at UWO for many, many years and way, way back when, when Wadi was a thing and Wadi was Wisconsin Assistive Technology, I forget what the I stood for, but initiative or something like that. But I thought, oh, I, I need to find where the Wadi stuff is because it kind of disappeared for a while or it didn't really disappear. It just was no longer part of uh, DPI. So I found it located under Ocali, which is what the um, AT Forward micro credentials are linking us to for are these micro credentials, right? So all of those same modules were there, and then they built on them. And then the AT Forward people took it even further and built on it and added more up to date resources and all sorts of things. So I thought, well, I hit the jackpot, I'm going to use this for my class, right, that I teach um, in the evenings. And so one of their assignments, so I have a hybrid type course, so they have to do work outside of class. So I thought, well, why recreate the wheel or me having to create everything? They can just go and get, and they also get a certificate for it. And, it, you know, it builds on their own uh, capacity. So I actually put together a couple slides that I pulled out. I pulled some comments out from um, three of my students as I was grading. Um, I didn't pull the whole thing out because I didn't want you to see all their stuff and may identify them, but I pulled some comments out. I could share my screen and just show them. Is that all right, Kathy? Yep. yep. I even snuck the AT forward. Uh, slide style. Do you see the screen? <laughs> yep, yes, we got I do. <laughs> yeah. So the, this one, that was really nice. It's the micro credentials assignment. So like, what did you think of that assignment, right? Really applies so well to my students. I was able to truly apply what I learned directly to my work in the classroom. And then this person went further on to explain what they actually did and what they took. So the modules that they had to do were the AAC, because this class is on students with the most significant cognitive disabilities. So they're required to do, they were required to, to do two and then pick one of their choice. And this person did um, augment, augmentative um, communication and alternative communication. But um, another one was independent living and then the complex needs um, one, but. Let me go to the next, see if they make this work cool on the next slide. Nope. Uh, Got to be on the slide to go to the next slide. There we go. These activities were helpful. And then this person also said, I was able to apply this material learned in my classroom. So, you know, these are teachers that are, are not licensed yet, haven't had, you know, four-year degree in special education, but have a four-year degree in another area. One actually had it in architecture, right? So it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, so they're in a classroom with students with significant needs. And it was just really helpful that they had immediate access to ideas and things they could use in the classroom. And then, wait, go back. One other, these gave additional, the, these assignments gave um, additional people like Kathy White <laughs> and other resources because some of them actually got connected up through the COP 
through this. And so now they're continuing to learn. And so it does help them in their overall career. And then I wanted to say, I've spent a lot of time in my role in my daytime job working for the Department of Public Instruction. And I have an opportunity to work in work groups. And I noticed one person today is even on this call. And I don't know, Kathy, if you want to call her on, but I have some quotes from her on here if she would like to share them or not. Sure. You can volunteer in the chat or just be quiet and we won't share who she is. So let me know if she comes, if she volunteers or not. And it's okay if she doesn't. Give her a second. Or did she leave? <laughs> no, Sarah says I can. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to share. Say, this is what Sarah sent me when I asked her to give me some feedback. So go ahead, Sarah. Okay, I'm having some technical. And you don't have to read it. You can just explain because you know what you wrote. <laughs> yeah, um, I did. I started. I did one and started a second one um, this summer as some PD hours. And I thought it was really beneficial. It gave me a lot of resources, um, a lot of things I want to pass on to teachers that I work with. Um, the one that really stuck out to me is I started the complex needs one. I didn't quite finish that one yet, but um, I told Iris, I like I really felt seen. I work in an ID and autism classroom. I've had many conversations with Iris about my students not necessarily fitting the mold. Um, yeah. and a lot of PD, even if it's special ed related, does not gear towards that population. Um, but the complex needs ones really does. And it provides a lot of resources. And, um, as one of my options for the three things I chose to do, I watched a previous COP meeting where um, they spoke with a student who uses all kinds of assistive technology throughout their day to participate in school. And I felt like that was so meaningful to actually see that in action. So um, I, I just like the being able to, the acknowledgement too, that I get from having the little badge. It's not a big thing, but it's just nice to show, um, like somebody said earlier, to have something more formal to show I've done the work I'm you know I'm committed to this that's awesome thank you so much for sharing anything else Iris I just want to thank AT Ford for taking it on and providing this for our state and beyond right it's awesome absolutely and absolutely I just want to comment a couple of things that I've said when Sarah mentioned too so again the um, all the previous AT Forward COP meetings from 2020 to 2022 are now found on the AT Forward's webpage, and they've been broken down by topic. And in addition, they've been chunked down into like 20 minute subtopics. So, just again, really thank you, Sarah, for bringing that up because again, that is one of the apps your learner options, and that's a wonderful resource. Um, so, please tap into that. And then also, just in the chat, I think it was Kim just to reference. Um, that idea of um, we've had a lot of participants utilize this for their PPG, and it's been a wonderful um, uh, resource for that. So thank you. And I think the question was, I think, Kathy, you answered the question about time. And then um, mm -hmm. Roxanne had asked, yeah, you can do them at your own pace. And they, there's not a deadline. Like, we don't say no. you have to have them done by, you know, the end of the year. Whatever. You just do them at, at your pace. And then when you're ready to submit it, we're ready to provide the feedback so and the ATEM modules once you start a module it just takes you right back to where it was so you've got 15 minutes at lunch and you want to do a little reading and a little work on it you can do it then and then you can go back to it another time and it's just going to pick up where you left off so you know and that that's a great part about this is because you don't have to do it all in one setting you know you do it when you have the time when you've got the energy you know and for some people that's after all the kids are in bed, you know, <laughs> or whatever it happens to be. Mike, you have a question? Aides are the people that I think they will be amazing people to take this to. Oh, absolutely. 
Yeah. <laughs> any, any perfect, any, you know, paraprofessional or whatever. I think it really helps them because it empowers them a little bit too. Cause you were mm. always saying, you know, do this and do that for these, for, for whomever. And, but we don't give them enough information, <laughs> you know, so they want to learn too.